So this is the video for the second bag sort in the row B kit. So we have the B7 through 13 bag left, and I have three of the four and a half inch squares. For, and I've labeled them B12, B11, and B7 per the instructions on the notes that I did when I opened this kit to begin with that's covered in the first video. So I'm gonna set my booklet aside and get my book out. Obviously the first one is B7, so I'm gonna save this square and turn it to B7 here. So here's that block, and then I need to find these pieces. I'm gonna set these other squares aside while I do this over here. So we're gonna dump this out, make sure we get all the pieces out. There's some little tiny bits in here for one of the squares, okay? So we have large footballs, these are obviously not the correct size. And I'm gonna separate these things as I go through to find the others. There's some funky shapes. Keep these with the same kind of a size that they are. That goes here. So I'm gonna go through and find the footballs for this particular block. So I found all the pieces for this B7 block. Got four of the football shapes that go in their respective locations. And then I have four of these diamonds. Now these diamonds are kind of a little oblong, I guess would be the best, bet to, best way to say it. Um, you've got one side that's longer than the other. And then this obviously is flipped around, but I wanted you to be able to see that. Um, so what you're gonna do so if you put this this way with the long side pointing to the corner, it fits okay. But if you put this with the long side facing in, then it fits less okay. So make sure you put the long side towards the outside. Now if you prefer it the other way, that's fine. Just be consistent for all of the corners because if one of them's different, it will show. If they're all flipped around, nobody's gonna notice. So I'm going to place these where they belong, and then I will take my Sharpie and label them with the B7. Now notice how there's no piece in the middle. That's because there's not, it's just a, a space. And so what happens with this block is you're gonna take this four and a half inch square and applique these pieces onto it. So in the block assembly video, we will talk about how to place these accurately and applique them on with the papers. So, I want, so now that I've got these labeled, you'll notice here, as we've talked about in the past, this Dear Jane colorway has a creamy background and then focus fabrics. So the creamy color in here is these applique pieces. So that means the focus fabric is going to be the square. So I'm just gonna put a dot on the square indicating my focus fabric. I will bag these up into a baggie and move on to the next block. So we flip the page to B8. B8 has um, all this fun stuff going on. Now, if you look at this, it's very similar to B7 because you applique these on, and you applique these on, and you applique all these on. But then there's no four and a half inch square for B8, so how do you get these, how do you get this block to be right because there's not a four and a half inch square? Well, in reality, the center's cross is not applique on, it's pieced. So imagine that these ovals are not here, okay? So I have all four of the football pieces, but we're gonna pretend that they're not here for just a second, okay? So you have this cross piece on a square. What we have is these pieces that make up the cross. So let's place these and see where that leaves us, okay? So once we place all these, It'd be really convenient if we had a four and a half inch square. Well, what we do have are screwy pieces shaped like this. 
that fit in the corner. So this is how you end up getting your four and a half inch square completed. And then you applique those footballs on top of these pieces to ensure that the block looks correct. So I have all of the four footballs here. Now when you line up the footballs, just wanted to show you, the math is not the same when you make the pieces versus the book. So they are a tiny bit off like they were in B7, um, but that's okay because they're all consistent to each other. But just know in this, in this situation, they're not gonna line up exactly like they're supposed to. So I am going to take my Sharpie and label all of these pieces B8, and then I will be ready to mark my focus fabric. So I have all my pieces labeled B8, and so the focus fabric pieces are gonna be the little footballs and the center diamond pieces. So if you have a directional fabric, you wanna make some decisions whether or not you want it, let's say it's a stripe, if you want the stripe to run the whole thing, if you want it to radiate out from the center. If you do radiate out from the center, remember that these are also radiating from the center. Just that kind of a thing. These are the decisions you make now so that when you go to block prep, you don't have to relay this out. I'm going to label my piece of paper in my baggie, B8, and bag these up and move on to the next block. Next, we have B9. B9 is going to have some pentagons. I like to call them home plates because they look just like home plate. We got four of these pieces. And then you've got eight different triangles and a square in the center. So since we have found those pieces, um, there's a bunch of squares. So I put the squares of the similar size in a pile. That one is too small. That one is very close. I'm gonna go through these. And also you wanna pay attention to the fact that this one is kind of got a in, internal curves to it, so that's not correct as well. So I'm gonna go through these pieces and I'll find my squares. And then I will also find my triangles. Um, the easy way to, to check this is to check it against the paper actually. So if, you, if it lines up exactly with these corners, which it does, so this is my square. And then we're gonna put these things here. And then it's a matter of going through the triangles and finding which ones match that as well. And there should be eight. So I've placed my pentagons and I've found eight of the same size triangles. There are four that are larger and there are four that are smaller, and it's pretty obvious. So I'm gonna place these eight in their respective corners. So now I'm gonna label my pieces B9. Now we mark our focus fabrics. Uh, the only ones that are background is the center square and the four triangles that point in towards the center. So the corner triangles are focus fabric and the little home plate looking things are focus fabric and the rest of it is background. So I will bag this up. If you have a directional, mark directional and we will move on to the next block. So next is B10 and if you look at this central portion here you would assume that there would be rectangles, a square, and a lot of teeny tiny triangles around. But if you look at the notes in the booklet, it says that B10 has a center cross that it will be appliqued onto the square. So this square out here that goes around the cross is actually one piece of paper. And you have a piece that you only have one that's close to this, so you have a piece of paper that is that size, okay? So that is going to be the background for your cross. And then of course there's triangles to go around that, which 
We just separated triangles, so these are the four smaller triangles that you have left. And then, obviously, there's the pieces of the cross. So the pieces of the cross, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so you've got six tiny pieces here that if I can pick them up, Okay, there's six pieces in the bag that are small like this, okay? So there's rectangles. So the four rectangles, obviously, are for the cross. And then there's two squares, and are they the same size? Why? No, they are not. They are about a 32nd of an inch off. So this one here is a tiny bit bigger than this one here. I'm not sure if you can see that stair step right here. So the trick is to figure out which one goes where. So there's this one and then there's this one. And this square in my hand looks like it fits both. So if it's a different size, which one goes with which? Because if one of them is a 32nd of an inch off for this tiny square, it will make a difference when you go for assembly. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a rectangle on its long side and line it up to the square and make sure that it matches exactly. So this is about as exact as it gets. We're gonna verify that by putting it on this one. Sure enough, this side of the rectangle is just slightly bigger than the square. So this, the one with the tiny bit larger is the correct square for the cross. So we're going to place that in the center. I'm going to move my triangles and then we're going to place the rectangles around the outside. Again, this is the background for the cross. So when you go to assemble this, you're gonna attach these rectangles to the square and then attach those that cross to the, the bigger square. So let me get my pieces laid out and we will be able to label from there. So all my pieces are laid out. This is the square that goes underneath the cross and we're going to label each one with B10. So they're labeled, now we're going to label the focus fabrics. The background fabrics in this one are going to be these squares here. So this square, this square, this square, this square is background. And the background behind the cross, so the stuff that you see in white, which is really this square, is also background. But everything else is focus fabric. So I'm going to label the rectangles, the outer border section, three, four, and the triangles in the inside section here, and the five pieces of the central cross all go on focus fabric. So just to verify, I've got one, two, three, four background pieces, and number five is here. So I'm gonna bag this up, and then we're gonna work on B11. So the next block is B11. B11 has one of the four and a half inch squares in it, according to the back of the booklet in the package. So that's what's going to be with things on it. But if you look at this, it's like, okay, but there's mostly pieces. Why do I need a four and a half inch square? Well, if you go back to the notes section, you will see this is B11. The entire block has been shrunk slightly to applique onto a four and a half inch square. What that means is you're going to build this from the center out and then this whole contraption here is going to be appliqued onto this block. So it's going to be a matter of finding the pieces for the center. I had the middle part. Here we go. Is the other square that didn't go in B10 goes in the middle of B11. So the, uh, the bars and things that should go with it 
And so you notice they're just a little smaller, and that's that's what they said they did. They made them just a slightly smaller. So you can see here that it doesn't go all the way to the edge, which is okay. So I'm going to take the rest of these and place them on the edges. And then the triangles, basically you're going to treat this like a pie. So this this these bars section this off into different quadrants. And then you're going to take the triangles that are left, one here, and again, it's going to be slightly smaller than the book. It's okay in this case. And then you're going to take the bar with two ends that are diagonals. So you put that in next to the paper, so then we're even smaller. And then you take these arcs with flat bottoms on it, and that goes there. Your finished section is going to be smaller here, and that's what that's why they made a note to make sure that you know that that's okay. So let me finish assembling this central portion. So now these are all laid out, and I'm going to label these B11. Okay, so for focus fabric, we have the center square here. And then the bars that come out from this from the middle are background, as is these 45 degree angle bars. The triangles are focus fabric, and the little arch pieces are focus fabric. And the background, or the big square, is background. So if you have a directional consideration, now's the time to mark it. Otherwise, bag this up and we'll go to the next one. So B12 is very straightforward. This is where we're going to use our last four and a half inch block. So obviously this is a background and it's the same drill with five pieces going to be applied onto it. You've got one square with edges that go in a little bit here. That's going to be the centerpiece. And then you've got four footballs left which are nice and slender. And that's where these go here. And that's the entire block for this part. I'm, I'm going to label these with B12, and the only piece of this that is focus fabric is the background four and a half inch square. So all of these applique pieces are background, and this is going to be your focus fabric. So I'm going to get my Sharpie, my red Sharpie out, and label that with a dot. Quick and easy, bag this up, and move to the very last one. Lastly, we have B13, which is one of the easiest blocks in this entire quilt. You've got a big square, four rectangles, and four squares left to use for this block. So we're going to lay these out, label them B13, and then now, <laughs> focus fabric for this particular one is not very evident. So this is what you do for this, okay? You treat this like a two color block. What that means is whatever color you make the squares in the corner, you make the same color in the center. And then the rectangles are a second color. Now you can play with this with however many fabrics you want to play with, but in a, these are all two color blocks. So in order to maintain the two color block theme, I'm going to pick which ones I want focus fabric and which ones I want to be background. Now, I have, for this particular quilt, for this round, I have a black background and a bright batik as my focus fabric. I'm not sure which one is for B13, but it's a bright batik that le reads as a solid. So, when you think about the sashings, my sashing is going to be my background color, which is black. So what that means is I want most of this block to be focus fabric, which means the center has to be focus fabric. And if the center has to be focus fabric, then so do the other squares in the corner, because the idea is to have distinction between pieces that touch. Since these all touch the edge, they have to be background, and these will have to be focus fabric. So I'm happy with that. But if you want to choose a different way to lay out the colors, so be it. But this concludes our bag two 
bag sort for the row B kit.